Let's get fired up, shall we? It's Friday. Happy Friday. <laughs> Happy Friday. What are we? February what? 10th? 10th. 2023. <laughs> I, I mean, literally, I can't believe that we're already practically, you know, a month and a half into 2023. Right. I mean, right. I, where does the time go, John and Amy? <laughs> I don't know. I feel, you know, living in Cleveland, I feel spring will be here in another four or five months. <laughs> I, I was just talking to somebody in Boston that said it was 61 there today. Yeah, that's what we had yesterday. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah please, everybody, like, let us know where you're, uh, where you're tuning in from and let us know what the temperature is so we can either cry for you or be happy for you. All right. Um, hey, thanks so much for tuning in today, Friday, February 10th, 2023. I am with John Fitzgerald and Amy Mackey. These are the plant strong coaches that I have known forever. And these guys absolutely rock. Uh, John and Amy, before we jump into the three habits that are absolutely crucial to kind of being successful. Uh, will you guys just give me a quick little overview of what you guys do with your coaching? Sure. Take it away, Amy. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> well, the best part about the Plant Strong Coaching Program, it's called Trailblazer Path. And the reason why is because we are trailblazing a new path filled with the tools and the mindset that you really need to continue a plant strong lifestyle for the long haul so you can really reach the goals that you want to reach by using mindset and habits and community to actually get there you know rip when we started this program four years ago with your blessing and Lori's help we thought people would come in do the 10-week program and be on their way and they'd be self-sustained they'd be all good what we learned was that people love the ongoing support the ongoing community and the fact that it helps to have a little refresher every now and then exactly what it means to build habits, set goals, have the right mindset. So it, it's, it's been fantastic. So <clears throat> I'm just looking here at some of the comments and it looks like in Wisconsin, it's 29 degrees. There's somebody from Melbourne, Australia. Don't know what the temperature is there. Oh yes. Watching from a very warm Boston. That's Bobby Franklin. Uh, Kim Snow is saying it's eight, 80 pool is 79. I don't know what that means. Wow. <laughs> Maybe the pool is 80. Pool in her backyard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Oregon is 48. Anyway, you know, it's funny on my, on my iPhone, I've got a bunch of different cities and I love just going in and seeing what the temperature is <laughs> in different cities around the country. Isn't that weird? <laughs> I checked the forecast for Austin on Sunday, February 19th. It's looking good. Warm temperatures. I saw lows 40, high 70. That's what my, my iPhone showed me. And the reason why we care about that is why, John and Amy? Team Plant Strong. Woo! <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Team Plant Strong has a, a team of people participating in the annual Austin marathon. So we're excited to meet everybody and have everybody in town. Well, it's the, it's called the Austin marathon, but not all of us are doing a marathon. No. You, also, you also can do a half marathon. You can do a 5k. Um, and it's not too late. So if you want to fly in from Melbourne, Australia uh, to join <laughs> us, uh, we'd love to have you. We're having a, a dinner at one of my favorite places in the world, Casa de Luz Friday night, uh, starts at six 30, goes till eight 30, show up. You won't miss it. I mean, you uh, you don't want to miss that one. Um, there you go. Uh, Bobby, thanks there. So um, John and Amy, there's three habits that we want to talk about today. But before we talk about habits, I want to I'm going to I'm going to ask you guys a question uh -oh. just to see if you can answer it. All right. What is a habit and why is Ooh. it important? <laughs> well, wow, that's a deep question, Rip. <laughs> so. Uh, listen, a habit is something that you do every single day, as we like to say in the coaching program, no matter what, right? <laughs> right. And so what a habit is, is it's what it's the things that you do each and every day that make you healthier or keep you healthy, right, Amy? It's what they're doing every single day. Absolutely. It can also be a bad habit, 
but we're working to eradicate those and really flip the switch to do something positive that is really going to help you meet your goals by doing something every single day. Your brain loves doing that every day. Great. So the three, the three habits that we want to talk with you all about here over the next 20 minutes or so. One is what's between our ears, John and Amy. <laughs> Mindset. <Not much. laughs> well, it is Friday. It's been a long week. But mindset is really the number one way that you can really come into the plant strong lifestyle. There's a couple of different ways you can do this, right? You can be like, I have to do this thing. I had a bad cholesterol test and I don't really want to do it. And I don't want to try this and it's going to be hard. That's one mindset, right? That's probably not going to get you very far. But you can also flip the script there and say, you know what? I have to do this thing because it's going to be good for me. And I'm going to look at it as an adventure. I am going to see it in a positive light with all of the amazing things I can try, all of the adventures that I can have in the process, even meeting new friends, trying new foods. I'm really going to look at this as something that I can really tackle from a positive standpoint and get positive results from it. I like the way you're attaching it to something positive as opposed to something negative, because that to me then makes it much more sustainable and, yeah. and, and healthy. Right. And, and Rip, I, I think the thing that we focus on with mindset is the fact that, and this is the example I use, right? If you do a New Year's resolution and you make it up two minutes before the ball drops on December 31st, you have done nothing but make yourself a little wish. And so by January 31st, we know that 77% of those resolutions are done. They're over. No one's doing them anymore. So the difference is the mindset is if you actually change your mindset, if you actually start thinking of positively like Amy just talked about, you are more likely to be able to stick to and keep doing the habits that you need to create to become healthier. So mindset to me is the base of everything. If you don't change your mindset, that's where things just come and go. And we're like, oh, well, I quit. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm just going to give up. Right. But if you've changed your mindset and you've got a growth type mindset, you say to yourself, I'm not giving up. Yeah, I just tripped over that speed bump. It doesn't matter. I'm getting up. I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep going and keep moving forward. Well, and I like what you said there, John, is that I think that this, the, the mindset habit really is the foundation yeah. that will allow everything else to, to grow from the other habits. Um, you know, uh, there's some quotes that, that I love uh, using with my kids, for example. <laughs> and I say, you know, there's a really, really bright guy about 150 years ago. His name was Abraham Lincoln. And he said, most folks are about as happy as they make up their minds to be. And you yeah. think about that and it's really, really powerful. And how many of us decide to, you know, go through life uh, as the victim, you know, and with this just negative, you know, weight on our shoulders. And my mother loves to say that attitude, when it comes to it, like embracing this way of eating, for example, Attitude is absolutely everything. And I know you guys talk about this forever. But I also have found that your mind, it's, it's like a muscle. And the more that you can exercise your mind and the more that you can start to do whatever it is you're trying to do, the easier it gets. Just like anything is when you, when you exercise that body part or that thing and then you do it repeatedly over and over again. And I like, for example, being a, a parent. In the beginning, it was so insanely hard and my my patience would always run out at a certain level of the day. And now I've learned just how to take all that in and all the noise, all the just the craziness. And um, uh, and I got to thank my kids for that because they have allowed me to be just a better, more patient, uh, more nurturing human being in general. Right. And I think, but a lot of that comes too from your attitude, Rip. I mean, it comes down to the fact that you've yeah. accepted that and you're willing to, to make the changes in your mindset to say, I can handle this. Right. And these kids are helping me grow. All, all the things that you just said all sound to me like a growth type positive mindset. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to throw one more quote at you. And this is Babe Ruth who said, it's hard to beat a person who never gives up. And yeah. if, you're, if you're like, if you have that mindset, that, you know what? I'm never going to give up. I'm going to like conquer this thing. You will conquer it uh, because 
we all know that life is going to throw hurdles in front of you and obstacles and, and make it difficult. But just expect the unexpected when it comes to, right, just like shit that's going to be thrown at you. Yeah. Whatever, I mean, whatever it is. Yeah, Amy, we talk about all the time in the coaching program, right? Being resilient, getting back up, dusting yourself off. Absolutely. You know, I think that if you don't change your mindset and you try to do something new, you're going to get the same results that you've always received. Right. So if you if you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. And when you set that mindset to, you know what, I'm going to do this, I'm going to make it fun. I'm going to incorporate it into every area of my life. I'm really going to enjoy this process. And if you think about it from this standpoint, when you learn a new trick, I'll learn a new skill, learn a new uh, hobby learn a new activity, it creates new brain cells. It's one of those things that really actually helps to keep us young by exercising our brain and learning new tricks. So if you think about this as a new learning adventure and you soak up all of the knowledge that you can, you, you try new foods, you look at new recipes, you read some more information, you watch some videos, you listen to the podcast, all of that information that you're taking in is really to help in in addition to just knowing, is really helping you to learn new pathways in your brain to actually create new brain cells and keep your brain elastic and young. I love that. I love all that. Um, so that's mindset. Do we want to continue to talk about mindset or do we want to move on to our number two habit? What do you guys think? I think number two. I think, I think once okay. we, now everyone understands mindset and it's the foundational piece, what's that next step? So, Okay. So what the habit that we want to work on and I, what I want to grill in with you two, because you guys are like the champs is, well, how do we do it? Because the habit is let's eat more plants, oh, more yeah. plants, but like, okay, yeah, it sounds good. But <laughs> like, what are the habits that I can inst instill during the day? So I'm getting more plants. What do you think? Yeah. So the first thing is, is to remember that any habit you start, you need to find that anchor moment, right? That anchor moment that's going to remind you to do the new habit. So an example, right? If you want to start a habit of flossing your teeth, your anchor moment would be when you put your toothbrush down on the counter before you floss your teeth, right? So you have to find that whether you self-create it or whether you use something that you do every single day as that anchor moment to create that habit. So the example that I use all the time and get laughed with the trailblazers because it's kind of become my my go to thing is I set my habit is when I open up my refrigerator, I'm going to grab two baby carrots. So I've got a container of baby carrots sitting right there in the refrigerator. So I know that when I open up that refrigerator, regardless of what else I see in there, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab those two baby carrots. So it becomes a habit because when I open that refrigerator, the carrots are right there in view, and I, I automatically go right to them. I like that. I yeah. like that. What do you think, Amy? Well, and what that does is that it connects those two events, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you're hungry, angry, mad, tired, lazy, feeling needy in some way, shape, or form, and you're searching for that thing. But if you open up the refrigerator and you're looking for some junk to magically appear, right? <laughs> maybe there's junk in there. Maybe there isn't. But if you have those two baby carrots, it gives you a pause so you can have the two baby carrots. You're crunching on something. You're adding some fiber to your system and you're giving yourself a moment to reflect on what it is you really need when you open up that refrigerator. Plus, in the process, you're actually getting more plants. When you are choosing to add more plants, having them available is really important right? Mm -hmm. You want to have plants in your refrigerator. You want to have some plants in your pantry in the form of beans and whole grains and things of that nature. Surrounding yourself and preparing your environment to have those items in there is really the foundation of how you get more plants. You just, so what you just said there, I think was brilliant. And I want to say it again. So you want to create the environment mm -hmm. that you want to be or that you're trying to achieve. So for example, John, you said, you know, baby carrots reach in, I'm going to have two baby carrots every time. But to me, it's, it, it, it's even more than that. It's like, okay, I go to the store, I get, I have the, uh, the honey, the honeydew melon, I've got the cantaloupe, I've got, you know, bell peppers, but you know what I find if I just have them in the fridge, I don't eat them. But if I take it one step farther and I slice them up and put them in a, um, 
what's it called? Container. <laughs> a container. Yes. A <laughs> container. Uh, or a, um, what? I'm trying to think of the stupid word. Uh, it's killing me. Tupperware. Tupperware container. That's it. Tupperware. <laughs> but if you put them in a next Tupperware. Word, next word. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Tupperware container. It's, it's crazy how, like, everybody will eat it. So it's like, I think it's knowing, too, that, you know, this is the, the, the famous Dan Butner quote is, though, you got to make the healthy choice the easy choice. Yeah. And so you got to remove all those barriers so that, you know, it doesn't take willpower. It's just you have the environment that's going to allow you to eat more plants. Right. And Rip, what does that go back to? Listen to what you just said. It goes back to mindset. You've got to have created that mindset to say, I'm going to eat healthier, which means I need to shop healthier so that that healthy food is in my view and in my house. Because if it's the junk food is in your house and I get it, there's divided households and those can be difficult, but you've got to have a place just for your stuff. And so you can eat more plants by simply having the mindset to get more plants and have more plants in your house. And Bobby, Bobby just said, don't have the bad food home. Exactly. Right. Because if you have it, you'll be like drawn to it like a moth to the flame every <laughs> single time. And, you know, I know when I've got like something somewhere that my wife has bought for the kids, my mind doesn't stop thinking about it. Right. <laughs> Where if it's not there, it's like out of sight, out of mind. You know, it's all good. Yeah. Um, Amy, what else you got here on this front? Well, we just talked about this on Wisdom Wednesday last week um, in the Facebook group, uh, in the Plant Strong Facebook group, making this the easiest way possible, right? So if you don't like to cook, if you're super busy, if you have so many different things going on and you open up that refrigerator and everything requires work, like you said, if you didn't chop up the melon, you're probably not going to eat it. How many have thrown out a whole melon because it went bad before you ate it because you didn't chop it up? We know how that works, right? Everybody's done that. So having things ready to go or the easiest form possible, what I love about Plant Strong is that we don't care if you use organic. We don't care if you use fresh, frozen, canned, as long as it's low sodium. We don't care if you're cooking your beans from scratch or you're using a can. That's absolutely fine. But when you open that refrigerator, there should be things in there that you can grab quickly. When you open your pantry, same thing. There should be things you can grab quickly. The baby carrots, the melon that's already chopped up, having some soup that's made that's in the freezer that you can microwave in five minutes, or having a box of our firehouse engine two um, chili or our, um, our Thai carrot chickpea is amazing. If you have one of those or you've got plant strong pizza crust in, in the freezer, you can just add something on top of that put it in the oven really quickly. You can have a meal in like 10 minutes. It really doesn't have to take a lot of effort. And so that's one of the things that we covered in Wisdom Wednesday in the Plant Strong Facebook group last week was, look, if you have a emergency meals, even a bag of um, shelf stable brown rice that's already cooked, if you've got that box of chili, if you have some greens in the refrigerator and maybe some salsa, you have a meal just like that. It doesn't have to be super hard. It just has to be readily available so you're going to use it because having really fancy tools don't help you if you're not going to use them right yeah you know um what i have found too is that for a lot of people just cutting up fruit is is work and so what i would tell people just to get more plants into your body my youngest daughter hope she's eight years old and she is the queen of eating frozen fruit so what she'll do, so we have bags of, 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 uh, of peaches, of mango chunks, of blueberries, of raspberries. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, tropical blend. And literally, she will all throughout the day, she'll pour a big bowl of whatever it is she feels like. And then she just, that's what she's noshing on, right? Nice. So she's always noshing on frozen fruit. And then it thaws and then it's a little bit easier. But so if... If fresh fruit is a pain in the butt and you know it goes bad too soon and you got to mess with peeling it and slicing it and dicing it, then just buy the frozen. And as we espouse, we love frozen fruit and vegetables. Yeah. And Rip, the other thing I want to let people know is my, going back to mindset again, which is the first thing we mentioned, is if you look at the fruit, you buy that melon, you buy the watermelon, you're like, oh, it's too much work. I don't feel like cutting it up. So it sits on the counter. 
Whereas if you take a second to say, you know what, I'm going to put on some nice music, I'm going to dance, I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to cut this stuff up and make it fun, right? Get the kids involved, like you're saying with hope, get the kids involved, let them help. And it becomes a habit of every week, you come home from the grocery store, you cut the stuff up, it goes in the containers, all while you're listening to some, some Elton John or Billy Joel or whoever. So Elton John, I know, I know. How did I pick that? Amy, Amy let me ask you this. Um, because I know you you are so good at this. What are your thoughts on what people can do to get more plants by batch cooking? Hmm. Well, batch cooking is one of my favorite things because I do it in 45 minutes all at once. I set my oven to 400 degrees. I put in some potatoes to bake. I add my pot of rice, my pot of lentils, my pot of quinoa, and set everything to go at the same time. While all that is cooking, I'm chopping vegetables or chopping fruit and have all of those things ready to go. And that is a great way to do it. But one of the other things that I do, because I know me and I have to have the mindset of success. And for me, there are some days where I don't even want to assemble a bowl. So I will pop open a box of soup. I will have a my salad in the five ounce greens container that it comes in already. Dump the soup on top of that. Add some hummus. I'm good to go. I also love... Um, to cut the pizza crust or plant strong pizza crust into quarters and actually make panini sandwiches with those. Those Ooh. are amazing to do. If you have a panini press and if not, put them in a frying pan, add another frying pan on top. You can press them that way. Super, super easy. I think our plant strong pizza crust are the perfect platform for an easy peasy, no frills lunch that is super delicious. Well, my kids love taking the, the, the pizza crust we cut them in half, then cut them in quarters, and then they do open-faced peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on there. Right? Amazing. Yeah, they, they absolutely adore it. Um, hey, everybody in the comments section, when you're batch cooking, when you're cooking, when you're slicing, when you're dicing, what tunes do you like to listen to? Right? <laughs> there you go. We'd, we'd like to know. We'd so, like Rick, remember we were talking about, so when you, when you talked about mindset, you said, how do you make that a habit? So how do you make eating more veggies and fruits. How do you, how do you make that a habit? Yeah. Think of it this way. Find that anchor moment again, right? When that melon hits the counter, I'll slice it up. When those grapes come out of my grocery bag, I'll wash them and put them into a container. All those things, finding that anchor moment is still the key. Yeah. Uh, you know, lately I have been eating somewhere between on average eight to 12 pieces of fruit a day. Uh, and I'm just wondering, John, Amy, like on average, how many pieces of fruit would you say you eat a day? Oh, that's a good question. Um, always on my wrist, big bowl in the morning. How many? How night. many typically? How many typically? Oh, uh, probably three just on my big, my big bowl. Um, and then throughout the day, I'll have like a sumo orange or an apple or something like that. So I probably get five or six. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm about four. I'm, I'm a savory person more than a sweet person. So my fruit has to be tart. I love nectarines. I love raspberries. I love Granny Smith apples. Anything that is sort of tart is one of my favorite things. But I get about four. But I put raspberries in my salad at lunchtime. So mm. for breakfast, I've got potatoes, hummus, kale, and hot sauce. That's my go-to breakfast. That's your breakfast? I love <laughs> that. Potatoes? Wow. Yep. I could see if it was hash browns or something like that, but wow. I do Yukon gold potatoes with um, kale and hummus and hot sauce. That's my favorite breakfast. And then for lunch, I'll have a salad. Um, I love doing baby spinach and shaved Brussels sprouts with raspberries and my favorite clementine dressing, which is just squeezed clementines, a little bit of lemon juice and some fresh um, sprigs of thyme that I stripped. Shake it up in a mason jar. It's incredible. It feels like sunshine just exploded <laughs> on your salad. So John and Amy, Amy, that's a fantastic point you just bring up. And I'd love for people to put in the comments section here. So I find one of the things that makes eating green leafies much easier, and we all want to get more green leafies, right? So those nitric yeah. oxide flows is a sauce, right? Mm -hmm. Or a dressing. So everybody in the comment section, what do you put on your green leafies to make them much more palatable if you haven't developed that palatable, you know, uh, uh, gene in your mouth yet. But like John and Amy, what do you guys do? What do you put on your greens? Oh, uh, balsamic vinegar. 
That's my go-to. And there's so many different flavors now that you can get them in that there's so much variety that you can change everything up. I've even started putting it on some of my bowls when I put that bed of greens in there, top it with some potato and some beans, and then just top it off with a little balsamic. Mm, good yeah, stuff. I'm seeing a lot of balsamic glazes yeah. here. I see smashed avocado. I definitely like doing that with my um, with my curly kale to help soften it up and, you know, yeah. like a little kale ceviche salad for sure. What about you, Amy? I like to take uh, about three tablespoons of hummus in a jar with a little bit of water and a lot of lemon juice and I shake it up. That makes a really creamy, acidic dressing that, uh, you know, that you really want to add that vitamin C to your greens, whether it is lemon, lime, orange, or some balsamic vinegar for that acidity that really helps to process the iron that's in there and all the rest of the nutrients. But I love creamy dressings when it comes to my greens. And so just, it, you can use any kind of hummus. So think of it a third, a third, and a third, a third hummus, a third water, and a third lemon juice. Wow. I like it. Every, I, you guys, you, you, the audience, you guys, I so appreciate your participation and uh, all your passion. All right, let's do this guys. So we talked about mindset, the foundation, the core for it all. We've talked about some things you can do to ensure you're getting more plants into your body. Uh, let's, let's end with more. I shouldn't say more. I should say move, move your body. So it's mindset, more plants, move your body. Why do we want to move our bodies for Pete's sake? <laughs> keep them, keep them moving, keep them lubricated, keep that, you know, keep that blood pumping. I think, you know, a lot of times people focus a lot on the food and of course we're plant strong foods, but you know, a lot of people focus on the foods, but equally as important is moving that body every single day. And Rip, you talk about it in your talks at the retreats, right? Sitting has become the new smoking, right? We are so sedentary between streaming networks, computers, work at desktops. It's just, it's crazy. It, it, it is crazy, John. And I just saw a figure that shows that the fourth, the fourth leading cause of death now is related to our sedentary lifestyle. I yeah. mean, it is, it is ridiculous. Amy, um, what do you like to do? Like, how, how would you recommend that people move more? Well, I love to walk. I live in downtown Seattle. I walk like crazy. I choose 99% um, of the time to go out on foot as opposed to driving my truck. And I look for every opportunity to do that. So I walk everywhere. I walk to get groceries. I walk to the market. I walk my dog. And when I'm outside, I'm getting my vitamin D from the sunshine. When it does appear here in Seattle, it's been gorgeous the past few days. Um, I also love the fresh air. There's actually a connection between seeing the blue sky, seeing the green grass, being outside to enjoy that, the fresh air that comes along with that. But I also try to walk the hills. We have a lot of hills here in Seattle. If you're not walking one of the numbered streets, you're going up the hill on the named streets. And so I try to make sure that I'm getting that little bit of brisk activity. And, you know, you don't have to exercise like crazy. You don't even have to exercise super strenuously. There's been a lot of studies out recently that yeah. short bursts of fast activity. So, for example, I could be walking for three miles, but. If I zigzag and go up some hills every few blocks, I'm actually getting more bang for my buck when I'm outside, which I absolutely love. Just getting that heart elevated just a little bit can really make a huge difference. So uh, trucker Steve just put in there that he's lost 165 pounds driving a truck since July. I don't know how much wow. movement he has <laughs> driving a truck unless he's got a dumbbell that he's doing with you know, one arm. But I wanna, I wanna say two things that I have done because I am a, an avid mover of my body. Uh, and I've been doing it for as long as I can remember, really since I was a little kid. And I find that days that I don't move are just good days. And days when I get some exercise in and some movement are great days, truly, truly. And I love, I love having, getting my exercise out of the way first thing, because it allows me to be that much more productive during the day. And so I swim. I've been part of a master swim program uh, for over 30 years from 7 to 8 a.m. And what I love about that is there's such accountability, right? When you, I've got like six guys that I've been doing this with for 20 years. 
And we're like, the night before, we're like, see you tomorrow, see you tomorrow, see you tomorrow, <laughs> right? And then if you don't show, you know, there's a little bit of like egg on your face, right? Right. Just, just egg on your face. <laughs> and uh, so th- there's something about that community and that support and that accountability that goes a long way. And the next thing I'll, I'll say is we have to make so many decisions in our life, our life. And it's kind of like why we want to slice that melon. And then that way we know we're going to eat it. So in the morning, I'm tired. The bed is warm. The last thing I want to do is get up and go out into the, this morning, it was like high thirties here. But what I do now, and I learned this from Doug Lyle, um, is I always set out my clothes that I'm going to wear for the day right by my bed. So I don't have to make a decision. I just put them on literally with my eyes closed in, in, you know, almost sleeping. And then I grab my backpack and I'm out the door. But the, the degree to which you can eliminate all decision making and any barriers to entry, I think will allow you to move your body. And I would say find anything that makes you happy and that you're passionate yeah. about. The other thing I'm doing right now, John and Amy, I can't get enough of is pickleball. Right. <laughs> and, and I don't I don't wear a watch, so I don't count steps, but I I play with enough people. They're like, oh, my God, I just got 11,000 steps in playing two hours of pickleball. And I didn't even think about it once. <laughs> right. Right. And, and I believe it or not, Rip, you have a multiple anchor moments in your morning routine. Right. When your feet hit the ground in the morning, what's the first thing you do? Put your clothes on. Boom. There's your habit. Getting your clothes on. Once your clothes are on, that's your anchor moment to leave the house to go do your swimming. So, again, it all comes down to setting yourself up for success by having those habits and having those anchor moments in place so that you are doing. And, you know, you, like Amy said, you don't have to do vigorous exercise every single day if that's not who you are. Just simply walking. I've seen a lot of comments saying I have a, a desk, you know, a treadmill underneath my desk and I walk all day while I'm on my computer. That's fantastic because what we what we've seen in studies is the people work out heavy. They do a treadmill. They ride a bike for 45 minutes in the morning and then they sit and they do nothing all day. You've lost all the benefit of that exercise you did that morning by being sedentary the rest of the day. So keep moving, not only just doing exercise like rip with swimming or, you know, going for a run or something like that. Stay active and moving throughout the whole day. That's to me is really the key. And if you don't like like typical fitness, have a dance party in your kitchen, right? Put on some music, (laughs) dance, get your heart rate up, or even you could do that. Let's even say you're having one of those days. You're sitting and watching TV. When a commercial comes on, get up and dance. There's all kinds of ways that you can really work movement into your day. I have a dog. My dog needs to walk three times a day. Mm -hmm. There is no negotiating that. He's going outside. It's going to be a mess if I don't take him. So between 5 and 6 a.m., I walk my dog every single day, no matter what. That's part of my anchor habit. When I get up, I put on my workout clothes so I can go walk my dog. I do it every single day, no matter what, and it's really stuck with me, and it's um, it's sort of my time. I've taken it to my time for my time to be self care, to be uh, mindful and sort of meditative. When I'm out, I look at the moon because it's still dark at this time of year, or um, you know, wait for the sun to come up, and I look at the mountains here over the sound. It's really a connection time for me to sort of set my mind for the day, and I really love being able to do that. Aaron. Aaron, have a good walk. Bye. <laughs> but but, but John, ahead. John and Amy and everybody listening, I want you to know that there's been all kinds of great research showing that even if you just get out for five minutes, the benefits that accrue in your brain, in the hippocampus, to your muscular, uh, your muscular system, your skeletal system are very, very real. So don't think uh, I can't get out for 30 minutes today. It's not worth it. Literally five minutes, yeah. make it happen. It's better than nothing. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you can get outside even better, because there's something in our brains that love the color blue and green, oh. right? That just It just kind of revitalizes us. So, it, and don't think like, oh, it's always gray here. I don't see blue sky. There's enough blue outside that you're picking up in the green that really helps you mentally too. It's fascinating. That's the Farvenhugen syntaps that's exactly located. I I, I didn't know if you all knew that term. So (laughs) thank you. Thank you, John John and Amy. So um, let's do this. 
I think, I think we've done a really great job talking about mindset, right? How to get more plants and how to um, move your body more. What I'd love to do now is maybe we could take a couple minutes of questions yeah. from the audience. Before we do, though, Amy, what can people do if they want to get more plants in their body at a discount? <laughs> Have some things in your kitchen that are super easy to grab and go, whether you're grabbing granola to go on a trail hike, whether you're grabbing a box of stew because you really don't feel like cooking and you've got five minutes between Zoom meetings, right? If you're at work or you want to whip up that amazing Plant Strong pizza, use code STRONG10 for 10% off your first purchase at PlantStrongFoods.com. We have bundles in there. There's all kinds of different things that you can try. You can you can load up on anything in particular that you really want to, to try. I am absolutely loving our oatmeal raisin granola. I, it's my favorite. I take that with me when I go on a trail hike so I can have a quick snack and refuel with some fast energy. And you know, ultimately, when you're traveling, you're camping, there's so many different things that you can use. Our boxes of stew and chili, all you have to do is zip off the top. And you know what? I've eaten our chili cold when I've been on a trail hike and I was super hungry. It's amazing. Cold, hot, on a salad, on a pizza. There's so many different things that you can do with it. It's just absolutely incredible. So that's the code. It's strong10 at plantstrongfoods.com. And, you know, have fun searching through all the stuff. We even have a new stew, split pea, coming out. Split pea and vegetable. Absolutely. And everybody, you know, <clears throat> thanks for indulging us while we kind of give a little endorsement of our, our food line. But we are so proud of what we've been able to create over the last two years. And our goal really is to create the cleanest line uh, of whole plant-based products on the planet that is delicious, nutritious, and convenient and helps make your lifestyle maybe just a little bit more uh, convenient and easy. All right. With that, let's let's take a question or two. And then I got to... I got a podcast interview I got to do at the top of the hour and I got, I got to prepare. So Rip, while, while we're waiting for questions, let me just throw this out. And Amy, yeah. Amy, you can just, you know, Amy's heard this talk before. <laughs> so when we talk habits, right, BJ Fogg wrote a phenomenal book called Tiny Habits. And he said the number one key to making a habit stick and to making it become permanent is every time you do that habit, you celebrate. Oh. You celebrate the fact that you did that habit. Right. So celebrations. Right. It's like Amy was just doing wave your hands. It's patting yourself on the back. It's saying Yahoo. It's picturing your baby's face smiling. It's whatever makes you happy that reminds your brain and says to your brain, whoa, that was fun. I enjoyed that reward. I want to do that habit again. So talking about habits, we would be remiss if we didn't mention find a way that you can celebrate after you remember to do that habit. You'll be 100 times more likely to do that habit again tomorrow. And, 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 and John and Amy, what can people do if they want to join and be part of your coaching program? They can go to plantstrong.com front slash coaching. They can email us at hello at plantstrong.com. Either way, we will help point you in the right direction. Our coaching program is really cool because it is the most supportive group of cheerleaders you will ever find in your entire life. Half of them are here in this group. I think I love the, the participation and the sharing because you never know what you're going to share. What if I, what I said that I have for breakfast, what if that is somebody's new favorite breakfast forever and ever? Uh -huh. Because they heard me say it. What I love about our community coaching is that you don't know what you might share might help somebody. There are always going to be people in our coaching program that can share their experience that maybe is your biggest hurdle. And they've already been over that hurdle. I love the fact that it is so many people coming together in support of each other. And, you know, there's just something to be said to have a group of people that is ready to listen, whether you've had the best day ever, stumbled over a hurdle, fell off last weekend because it was somebody's birthday, or you're celebrating that milestone because you just got your cholesterol test back. There are so many people in the coaching program ready to cheer you on because they're all on the same journey as you are. And I love to think of it as that way. It is a journey, right? So it is a journey. Um, Let's take a couple of questions, John and Amy, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna duck out after about one or two, and then if you guys want to continue on for a couple of minutes, that's fine. Um, you know, um, so Michael, if you could pull up, uh, Captain Carhan has one. Is plaque reversal faster for someone in their 20s? And I would tell you, absolutely, it is. Like some of my father's research, when you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 
And what you've got basically is you've got the cholesterol deposits and the fatty lesions. Those you can basically metabolize away with this lifestyle. What you can't metabolize away as you get into your 50s, 60s, and 70s is the calcification. Mm -hmm. That's basically like hardened stone or rock that's in there. And that's not going away. <clears throat> but the good news is, you know, by eating this way, you're going to allow your endothelial cells to come back to life, which is going to allow your, <clears throat> your vessels to produce more nitric oxide, which will allow these vessels to dilate and become elasticized and youthful. And this will then therefore allow more blood flow, even though you haven't gotten rid of some of that calcification. Mm -hmm. But the moral of the story here, and John and Amy know this, is that it doesn't matter how old you are, it's never too late. It's never yeah. too late. I mean, Rip, when I started eating this way, I had a heart scare. I was 49 years old. I had a strong family history of heart disease and my cholesterol, triglyceride numbers, all those LDLs were off the charts, right? I started this program at age 49, and now that I'm age 50, just kidding, now that I'm 58, <laughs> nine years into this, it is amazing the changes, and the numbers have all precipitately dropped. I lost 50 pounds. It's it's never too late. Yeah. Hey, um, Michael, let's take this question by Jacqueline Crawl. I think that's a great one to toss to Amy and John, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to duck out, but John, Amy... You guys rock. Thank you so much for helping us with habits and everybody else. Have a great weekend. I hope to see many of you next weekend here in Austin, Texas. If not, we'll see you the next Facebook Friday, Friday Live. Bye. Thanks, Rip. I love this question from Jacqueline. So here is what I would do. I would involve your daughter in as many of the processes as you can when it comes to eating fruits and vegetables, whether it is having your daughter along when you're grocery shopping so that you could say, listen, we are going to pick out a really fun thing this week. We're going to pick out, you get to choose any fruit or vegetable in the entire produce section. Do you want to pick a certain color? Do you want to do, you know, anything like that? Get your child involved in actually choosing some that gives them ownership over what they actually get to pick. That can be the first helpful thing. The second is to provide as many healthy options, as many fruits and vegetables as you can without providing an alternative. So for example, if I had to choose between pineapple or a cookie, I'm probably going to pick the cookie, especially if I'm a kid. So if you provide pineapples and blueberries and watermelon cubes and maybe some, some raisins and carrot sticks and you put them in a muffin tin, that's the way I like to do it. So you can have different things in each one of the containers. And this is snack. This is what we're having for snack today. You could pick any of these. You can pick all of these. Or you can choose not to have a snack and don't pick any of them. But I'm going to put this right here or it can be in the refrigerator where they can reach in the refrigerator and grab some of those things out. That can be a great way to give ownership over what I'm choosing by you providing the best choices possible. So that's the way that I like to get kids involved. You can also do things like growing food, whether you've got toma a tomato plant growing on a patio or in your garden, you've got herbs on your windowsill, you've got a fruit tree. Any of those things can really help get kids involved in that process that can make the power of food be really exciting to them. And Jacqueline, I don't know how old your, your daughter is, but I'm guessing that any kid of any age, because when I made this lifestyle change, my kids were in their 20s and they rejected fruits and vegetables. So it's really any age. And I would say that the, the other thing that I have learned, I didn't know this when I was raising my kids uh, younger, when they were younger, is you can't force it right? You can do what Amy said and offer it to them, get them involved, have it on their plate, and at least try to get them to at least try it, right? At least don't, don't make an issue out of it. Don't say, you know, you have to sit at this table. Uh, my wife tells a great story about how her younger sister, her parents said, you sit at this table until you finish your peas. They came down the next morning, the, the little girl was sleeping at the table and the peas were still on the plate. So don't, don't make it an issue. Don't make it something that's live or die, right? Make it fun, make it interesting and don't give up, right? I didn't, obviously my kids are in their twenties. They can eat whatever they want. I, I'd lost that control along with everything else. But uh, the thing was, I just kept eating this way and kept leading by example, right? And I'll never forget about three years into my journey, my daughter sent me a picture of her making Brussels sprouts. Shocking, right? 
And and so that it, it can happen. So just give it time. Don't don't push. That would be my advice. Absolutely. You know, you can also gamify it. If you Google on the internet, uh, fruit, vegetable, bingo, you will find PDF downloads. If you have a little kid, um, if you have a little kid, you can download these PDFs, you can print them out. And then, you know, how many fruits or vegetables did you eat today? Let's do some, let's play fruit and vegetable bingo. You can even set it up. So like throughout the course of a week, you, let's see how many of these that we can hit. There are lots of ways that you can gamify and make it super fun. You know, it doesn't hurt to gamify things for adults either, right? <laughs> I know that um, whether you are doing a fitness challenge with somebody, you're seeing how many miles you walk, you're doing a virtual race, there's all kinds of things that you can do to really make this fun. When I was a kid, I used to have a chart on my door for gold stars, right? <laughs> adults like gold stars too, not going to lie. So anything that you can do to gamify or make things fun, but really, again, what does that come back to? Mindset. Yeah. Exactly. So, hey, I, I don't see any other questions, so maybe we'll wrap it up. I would just, I think the big thing I want you guys to take away from today would be that no matter what, remember that mindset's important and that creating habits will help you eat more veggies and fruits and healthy foods and will get you to move more. So find out those habits, make them even small, even if it's just like getting your clothes on and that's all you do. Take that first step and don't give up, right? Have the mindset that no matter what, I'm going to do this today. And if you miss a day, guess what? Tomorrow's a whole nother day and you can start up again. So Amy. You know, I really love that because ultimately at the end of the day, even if we can't fix everything, even if there's things out there that are just outside our control, I saw somebody make a comment here in chat. Even if there are things you cannot fix, you can make things better hmm. by doing the best you can in every other avenue. So this is Friday. I want you to have a great weekend. Get outside if you can. I hope to see a lot of you in Austin, Texas. Even if you are not running um, in the Austin 5K half marathon or marathon, stop by our booth. We will be downtown at the finish line. Look for the Plant Strong signs. Our whole team will be there. We'd love to meet you and say hi. We love to hear your stories when you come out to meet us. It's one of my favorite parts of being a Plant Strong coach is getting to be part of the journey of so many people. I love our Plant Strong community. You won't find a more supportive, amazing crew of people who have really taken these tools, put them to work, and changed their life. All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much. As Amy said, have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. Bye.